always, I'm Rebecca Lockwood, your neuro-linguistic programming trainer, hypnosis trainer, and breakthrough coach trainer. And I'm super excited to support you today. So a quick way to reduce anxiety. So the first thing when it comes to reducing anxiety is really understanding what is anxiety? What is anxiety? So anxiety is just like any other emotion that we experience, like sadness, happiness, anger, fear, guilt. Um, anxiety is another emotion that we experience. Now for some, anxiety can become more heightened than normal, just the same way that sadness can become more heightened than normal, just the same way that anger can become more heightened than normal. So sometimes we may um, hear people say, I've got anxiety, um, I, you know, my anxiety. And what people mean by that is that their anxiety is heightened more than usual and they experience the feelings of anxiousness more than they would usually. Now, when people feel more sad than they do usually, people don't really say my sadness. People don't really say, I'm experiencing more sadness than normal. People call it depression. Um, and depression is when sadness is um, more heightened than normal and when we feel more sad. The same when it goes with anger. So again, we don't really hear people say, my anger is causing me problems or my anger is, is, is <laughs> more of a problem at the moment. You know, people who have anger issues tend to either be in prison um, or they have um, anger management now, I know when I was at school, I when I was in my teenage years, I really struggled with my emotions after going through a traumatic experience at the age of 11. And so I experienced heightened anxiety, heightened sadness, heightened anger, um, which led to some struggle and some difficult years. Um, but that's for another story. So anxiety, when it comes to anxiety, then people tend to label it and call it something in itself but we don't really tend to hear people do that about any of the other emotions um, again with sadness people label sadness as depression and with anger people don't even tend to label it they just think that people have problems um, or people end up getting into trouble because of their anger or people go to anger management but we don't tend to hear about it as much as we do where people say my anxiety so anxiety is just like another emotion, like anger, sadness, fear, guilt, hurt, sadness. Um, and the only difference is, like I say, is that we tend to label it something in its own right, like it has its own identity and it encompasses us and becomes our identity. Um, and that's when people tend to have um, more heightened anxiety problems and give themselves an identity really um, and I've been there I was diagnosed with OCD during my uh, pregnancy with my first child and got very severe after which turned into postnatal depression so there was a lot of anxiety a lot of sadness and a lot of anger again at a different stage of my life and um, so I've not only experienced it firsthand I also train and develop our students within these methods as well and um, so I'm not just speaking from a place of taking my advice I'm speaking from a place of experience so that is um, the first step really is really getting really clear on what anxiety is and how people label and use anxiety as an identity trait now the second thing to think about is why am I feeling anxious so if you are feeling anxious or it's starting to heighten the feelings of anxiety um, it's about really exploring why are you feeling anxious now i also want to make a side note here as well is that if obviously you have ongoing anxiety and the methods that we talk about within these videos and within this training do not help it is very important to see a doctor and see a specialist doctor um, about your problem now, I also want to talk to you from an experience of my own, and this is the reason why it's important to see a medical professional. Um, when I, not that long ago, um, the first time I was diagnosed with overactive thyroid, um, I had like lots of heart palpitations and sweaty palms and felt very anxious. Um, and we kind of cleared that up. I had my second daughter 
and I experienced it again. Um, it didn't come along with any sadness. It was just anxiety and it, was, um, it wasn't necessarily worry as I had experienced in the past, but it was like heart palpitations, feeling like I'm gonna have a panic attack, shortness of breath, sweaty palms, all the physical symptoms of anxiety that we experience, um, which actually, when you think about it, aren't that different from heightened anger um, and possibly even heightened sadness as well. Um, it's just that we don't necessarily experience that as much as we do anxiety. And so what happened with me is I had, um, I did all this work and I went through all this, these processes and they still weren't helping. And when I went back to the doctor, after a blood test, we realised that the overactive thyroid was causing a problem um, and medication was the answer. So it's really important to make sure that you do speak to a health professional as well. These tips and techniques will help you su and support you alongside them as well, even if it is um, something medical like an overactive thyroid or something like that that's causing the anxiety or the anxiety symptoms. Um, so it's really important to do that. So number one was to understand what is anxiety. Number two is really explore why am I feeling anxious at the moment? And again, if it if it could be a medical problem, ensure that you go see a doctor as well. And um, but really exploring like why do I feel anxious right now? So for example, are you trying to retain too much information in your mind? Because I know that's used to make me feel really anxious and overwhelmed. Um, I was trying to remember everything all at once and I had a million and one things to do and it was making me feel really overwhelmed and really anxious. Um, now this may look completely different for you and that's okay. Um, another reason why you might be feeling anxious um, could be that you're worrying, that you're worrying and this is a really common trait in people who have um, an experience more anxiety than normal, um, that you're worrying about a future event and you're worrying about something that's not happening or you're worrying about something not working out or you're worrying about an event happening or like for example the current situation in the world you may be worrying about what's going to happen being unstable being worried um, and you, the outcome that you're seeing from this is negative or uncertain um, and you're imagining the worst right so this is quite a common trait in people who feel anxious, especially people who may feel anxious about more than one event specifically. So to give you an example, I may feel really anxious as I've got a big workshop coming up, right? So um, I fear, feel fear, having heart palpitations, shortness of breath, a dry mouth, you know, and it causes these feelings of anxiety right so my conscious mind may not necessarily be aware of the worry but it's definitely aware of the physical symptoms right so when we explore the question why am i feeling anxious it really helps us get to the bottom and understand what is your unconscious mind or your conscious mind so you may be consciously aware of it you may be not aware of it but you're still worrying about it um, what is what is the feeling that's coming up? What am I worrying about? What am I imagining going wrong, right? And then the third thing to do is to really think about the thing that you're worrying about and imagine successful completion. Think about the thing that you are worrying about and imagine successful completion. Because if you think about it this way, you cannot feel anxious about things that have happened in the past. So the example of a workshop coming up, right? So just giving you an example of something that may that I may experience in my life. So if I've got a workshop coming up tomorrow and I'm speaking to 100 people, I, can, I feel anxious now just thinking about it, right? I'm like, oh my God, what? <laughs> right? Um, but if I think about a, um, an event in the past that I've done where I delivered it to over 100 people, I feel this calm feeling because I know it's successfully completed, right? So the anxiety that, that I'm experiencing right now, um, and this is a light-hearted example, so it may be completely different for you, and there have been many times in my life where there have been more severe and, and very different, but just to give you an example to explain, explain the concept. Um, so if I imagine an event in the future that I'm to deliver, I'm imagining unsuccessful completion, I'm, and this is causing the feelings of anxiety. This is causing me to feel like I've got a shortness of breath. It's causing me to feel very tense in my body. It's causing me to feel like I've got sweaty but I can physically feel the, the, the feelings when I'm imagining an event in the future that's not going well. 
right? So what you need to do is you need to imagine successful completion. So if we were to take that example of me delivering a workshop to over 100 people, and I was to imagine myself after I've delivered it, getting messages from people saying, oh, that was so amazing. It was so helpful. Thank you so much. It automatically reduces the feelings of anxiety and it automatically reduces the physical symptoms as well. So it could be anything. It could be anything that you're worrying about, that you are panicking about, that you're imagining going wrong. And again, you may not consciously be aware of this. So you may be watching this thinking, she's got no idea, like I haven't got anything coming up or um, there's nothing that I can think of. And that's because we're not always consciously aware of this. Our brains have an unconscious, unconscious part to them and that unconscious part um, may have beliefs and values. And what happens is we act in accordance with our beliefs and values at the conscious and the unconscious level. So if you're there thinking, no, that's not me, I'm still feeling anxious, this, go back to number two, why am I feeling anxious? And you can spend time journaling, you can spend time just sitting and listening to yourself to really explore why am I feeling anxious, okay? So to give you a roundup, number one, what is anxiety? Be really clear on what anxiety is and why we experience it. Number two, really explore and understand um, in yourself, why am I feeling anxious? What's causing these feelings to come up right now? And number three, think about the thing that you're worrying about and imagine successful completion of that, that thing, whatever it is. Okay, that's it from me. I wanted to give you some really quick actionable tips that you can um, apply to your life or business straight away. As always, I'm Rebecca Lockwood, your neuro-linguistic programming trainer, hypnosis trainer and breakthrough coach trainer. And if you need anything from me, you know exactly where to find me.